Hi, my name is Mary Beth Hamilton. I am a student at the University of Phoenix. This is my project for the Code of Ethics assignment for my EDA 555 class, due November 10, 2011. In exploring my personal Code of Ethics, I began to reflect on my own cultural ancestry. To gain some help with this, I actually uh, called my father and had a little interview with him. He reminded me of the oppression that my Irish Catholic ancestors endured as they emigrated to this country after the potato famine. My ancestors, I grew up in Buffalo, New York, and they were some of the greatest builders of the Erie Canal. There was an incredible amount of discrimination at that time as the Erie Canal was one of the most dangerous places that existed in the United States at that time in history. Um, they endured a great amount of oppression from the Protestants and also from the other workers on the canal. The Irish were definitely not welcome when they first emigrated here. So I do find it interesting to not forget that I also come from a long line of oppression. Uh, the Irish Catholics, um, it was a long time, it was 1961 when the first Catholic president was elected and that was Kennedy. That was definitely considered a huge victory for my ancestors to finally be accepted in a political realm. Later, this was influenced when I traveled to Ireland. I, I learned more so the conflict between the Catholics and the Protestants, but at that point in time, which was the early 2000s, the Protestants were fighting amongst themselves, and they were fighting and oppressing each other to rise to power and lead the Protestant organization. And so, in two ways, this has impacted my personal code of ethics. One, never forgetting the roots and where you come from, and even though I may seem to have what's called white privilege today, I actually do come from a background of oppression. So to stay connected with that, I think, will help and serve me to have compassion in the future. And, and secondly, it's very interesting to me, and, and it has stuck with me since I learned how organizations can oppress each other in the fight for power. So those are two things that I will stay um, cognizant of as I become a leader myself. Moving more towards my own family, my father had some very interesting uh, ethical codes that he instilled in my two sisters and I from a very young age. For one, as young children, we were never woken up. We, uh, we were held responsible to wake ourselves up for school. And my father reminded me, we were never late for school. We always, we always got up and took that responsibility. So that was a good habit of mind that he instilled in us at a young age. Also, every time we left the house, he would say, don't forget CPR. And that stood for courteous, polite, and respectful. And that was our expectation for how to behave at school and amongst anybody that we encountered. Another uh, interesting story was one day I recall when I came home, I was probably in first grade, and I was on the bus, and some students were making fun of me because I had red hair. And my dad said, well, what is the, the kid's name? His name was Fred. And the thing, ironically enough, that Fred was saying to me was, I'd rather be dead than have a head that's red. And my dad said, well, you ought to say back to him, I'd rather be dead than have a name that's Fred. And however trivial and silly that may seem at this point in time, I was in first grade. I was probably seven years old at the oldest, so I think I became a strong advocate for myself at a very young age with the coaching of my father. At the same time, being courteous, polite, and respectful, that was our expectation. He also always told us we could hang loose at home, but always be on you know, our best behavior in public. Education was considered my job. My father and my mother both found uh, the, the effort grade that I got on my report card to be far more important than my academic grade. We always ate dinner as a family. It's kind of interesting. My father said he never created rules because he always figured if he created a rule, we would have to break them. So he didn't have rules, and I think actually that was hard for me growing up. I like to know where the boundary is. And every personality assessment I've taken as an adult indicates I am a rule follower. I actually really like uh, boundaries and systems, and I like to know where the line is. And, um, but bottom line with my family, I always knew that I was protected and loved. That became obviously a strong part of my own code of ethics, I think. Um, experiences growing up, something that became very important to me was 
One, having a bicycle, and two, knowing where the public library was. If I had those two things, I was good. I never felt alone in life. I spent the majority of my life, uh, my childhood, at the public library. Reading books has been my passion, and clearly that has, has indicated my life path and become a part of my code of ethics, because right now I'm the reading department chair at Harrison High School, and I've taught reading for 12 years for struggling readers. So independence and knowing how to read, to me those are two gifts that I have given myself at a young age. Luckily somebody pointed me in the right direction. I think that was my mom. She showed me where the public library is. Fifth grade things changed for me tremendously. It became further ingrained that I was alone in life. I was on my own and, and I developed the idea I had to fight for myself. I had some troubling experiences in fifth grade and that teacher was fired the year I was a student in his class. Um, I lost a lot of respect for education, but I never lost respect for reading. But I did uh, definitely become a voice for the voiceless at that point in time in my life. As I became a student teacher, that feeling was reinforced. Whenever I walked into a teacher's classroom as a young college student, I always quickly picked out the student in the classroom whose desk was moved way out in the corner away from the other students. I think I identified with that student and I always worked hard for those struggling students. I understand that the education system is not primarily designed for every student and I've learned how to advocate for students and better yet, over the years I've learned how to help them to advocate for themselves. And more through my life, I always seem to, to choose populations and groups of people who are struggling. Struggling students. I did a lot of work in social justice campaigning for animal cruelty. I worked at a nursing home all through college and helped care for elderly um, patients that were dying. I became a certified personal trainer through the National Academy of Sports Medicine. All of my clients had special needs. They either just recovered from some type of heart attack or stroke, or they were blind or somehow they felt safe and comfortable with me, and those were my clients. I also later in life worked in a residential treatment center with students who uh, came from the Department of Human Services or the juvenile detention centers. So clearly that has been a big part of my life. And that has also led to one of my challenges. I have had to learn not to be too affective and not too emotional and not too victim-oriented or focusing on you know, the, tr the troubles my students have had, but I've learned that the best way to approach the situation is to have a, a code of ethics that includes having firm boundaries, not wearing my heart on my sleeve, and being what I call a warm demander. It's kind of like a tough love approach, but definitely having a good, healthy relationship with students, but definitely demanding uh, and having high expectations that they, that they meet the goal. In my role as an administrator, I think my code of ethics will uh, definitely serve me well in my leadership and my uh, top goal for student achievement and for students to have success. I think I will definitely have a cautious eye on teacher-student relationships in my building. I, I know we all see the news all the time. I've had my own experiences with teachers that had inappropriate boundaries, and I think that may serve me well or that may be something that I need to kind of temper as an administrator. But I'll definitely be very um, cautious and careful of what the teacher-student relationships are like in my building and make sure that they are healthy and, and good for the student. I'm definitely going to also have to uh, polish up my poker face because I do wear my heart on my sleeve and my face is an open book. That has served me well for many relationships in, in the way that I've been able to be transparent with people. But as an administrator, I definitely need to keep myself tempered and measured and not wear my emotions on my face. Um, other than those simple challenges that I think have some you know, fairly easy resolutions, I think I have a pretty good solid code of ethics based on my ancestry and what my uh, ancestors have overcome, how that has instilled family values that my parents have reinforced with both my sisters and I. My experiences in education, although troublesome at times, have definitely fostered a good code of ethics for me as an educator. 
And I think all of that in combination will serve me well as an administrator. Thank you very much. Have a great night.